so welcome back uh, good morning once again uh, so this is the last uh, session of the workshop and uh, uh, will be the best uh, according to me because uh, it's a pinnacle of uh, all these learnings and uh, how to debug and uh, uh, how to summarize everything uh, and uh, how to uh, think system point of view uh, is definitely an important thing uh, in any embedded system designer's uh, life. So I hand over this session uh, to Padmanabhan sir. So please give me a couple of seconds so that I can give you the uh, rights for presentation. Okay. Sir, please uh, spare last five to 10 minutes. Uh, if anybody wants to give feedback, uh, he or she can give feedback and uh, we'll give officially uh, vote of thanks at the end. Definitely, sir. Definitely. Yeah. So can you see the share button? Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So welcome back. Uh, let us go through the debugging session now. So in this particular session, uh, we are going to discuss on the debug, like we have done a FPGA simulation on day one, like uh, we used model sim uh, to check the functionality. But uh, we are also going to perform SOC debug now with the help of uh, two important uh, debugging techniques. One is by using the signal tap logic analyzer and the other one with the system console instrumentation. So let us uh, try to do that uh, with by taking an example. I have the Qantas archive file uh, for that particular demo. I will share the same with you and you can practice it. But only problem is like you should have the uh, SOC board with you to debug. So I will show the procedure and then how I connect it and then I will show you on the screen what happens uh, with the data so that it is easy for us to understand what happens in the debug mechanism. Right, let me directly enter into the session. Uh, understand and uh, select appropriate uh, debugging tools for the FPGA design and hands-on use of different FPGA debug tools. So if you see here, in the different FPGA debug tools, what we were utilized in the earlier case is the model sim, which we use for simulation. And what is the actual hardware? Now what we are going to see, what happens in the actual hardware we wanted to check. When we say then there are two important debug techniques that are available. One is called the signal tap logic analyzer and the other one is the system control instrumentation. So what we are going to do in this particular lab is like I have a single lab in which we are going to use both the signal tap logic analyzer and the system console in the same lab. So we see that what is the benefit of having a signal tap logic analyzer, which is like a, a logic analyzer logic, so which is used on the real time simulation as well as on the system console. Uh, let me spend some time with simulation with model sim because we have done it uh, on day one, but then we can have some simple uh, ideas of what is possible with model sim. What is the advantage of uh, having a simulation? Let me say that uh, why simulation when we say include wide range of analysis. It reduces the development cost and it brings innovative products faster to market and it provides results that are impossible to measure on the physical prototype. And also we have high visibility of all the signals in the design. So that is the greatest advantage of performing simulation because yesterday we have seen that when we are trying to check the functionality of the design, we develop a test bench and we check the functionality. What is the problem when we say that it can take a very long time to run for larger designs because of excessive stimulus, because we need to generate more number of test cases in order to verify the functionality of the design. So in that case, it would be very, very tough task for us. Second thing is the designer has to interact or predict and create stimulus that matches the actual behavior. What is another challenge we have it's like we have to ensure that we need to achieve the code coverage. For example, we need to achieve 100 percentage. Then we have to pass the correct test. 
cases. So which test cases need to be generated in order to ensure that the expected output and observed outputs are one and the same. That is the challenge in the simulation. So this is what we have seen. We developed a test bench and we verified the functionality of the design. So you can you all knew that a test bench is a top level module without any inputs and outputs. So that helps you to provide the correctness. Now, there is a simple uh, test bench uh, logic. You can see you have data type declaration, module instantiation, procedural block declaration, stimulus generation, and then display statement. So, all those things are available here. The display statements are optional. If you want, we can use the display statement. So, we used a dollar monitor system task to display the output. So there was a question that okay, Sim, we use the model Sim Intel FPGA starter edition. So how many lines we can write it? So in the free starter edition, you can go up to less than equal to 10k lines of code, right? So when we have the uh, model Sim, right? So you can perform simulation. So it can be used independently or with Intel Cortex Prime Design software to create the startup scripts and link design to model Sim. Uh, with the current version of the Quartus Prime Design software, uh, we have enabled Questa Sim. So that is from the Siemens Mental Graphics EDA. You don't require model Sim. You can use Questa Sim, which could be useful uh, for performing the functional verification where it has a support of system very long. I will show you that later. And when we create a model Sim project, we create that project. We complete the design. We ensure that the design is getting simulated and once the design is simulated we check whether it is the functionality is fine and then we'll fix it all these things we did, did in the simulation which is the uh, run simulation platform now what is the difference we are going to see in the debugging techniques right now is like we are going to see and ensure that what happens in the onboard simulation there are two important uh, steps which i have shown on day one so to recollect, I will show that once again. Always we should ensure that whenever we set EDA tool option, ensure that the entire path of the model sim algebra is provided. The installation path is very, very important and critical to provide, number one. And the second thing is like whenever we set up the model sim, we should ensure that whenever we create a new test bench, go to the simulation settings, and then you should say compile test bench and click the test bench option and create a new test bench. So assignments, settings, EDA tools, and inside that we can get into the simulation. And inside the simulation, under the native link settings, you can click compile test bench. Automatically, when you click test benches, it lasts for new so that you can enter the test bench. So how did we do that on day one? You can see that we directly went into run simulation tool and then we have given RTL simulation. That's what we did. Right. So what is the difference? So lab access of model sim was shown to you on day one. Let us enter directly into the embedded logical signal. So along with the simulation, we should have taken the debugging techniques, but then why we are doing it now is to ensure that uh, those on the day one, we can directly use the remote lab setup. But then now we are going to see physically that what happens with the signal tap logic analyzer and the system console. So the signal tap is an embedded logic analyzer, which is embedded in the Qualtas Prime Design software. So what is the advantage of using a signal tap? It helps you to easily monitor signals using simple to elaborate triggering schemes. And no external equipment required. And uh, don't need to figure out stimulus synthesis based on the actual hard. What is the drawback of signal tap? Because see, you already have a design that is consuming some area. Whereas when we use a signal tap logic analyzer, it uses up to lots of memory resources inside the thing because it is also consuming uh, some memory resources. Because of uh, consuming some resources, there are chances that the timing constraints what we have applied. So that it can change the timing of the design. That is the one important thing which uh, we need to keep that in mind. 
And another thing what we also need to go through is like it requires recompile, which takes time. For example, when you modify something, it is our responsibility to recompile it once again. So the compilation process is again a tedious process because we have to perform again synthesis implementation, which will definitely take 10, 12 minutes. For example, the associate design example, which we ran last time, it took around 12 minutes for us to complete, right? So whenever we modify something in the Intel FPGAs and SOC FPGAs, the recompilation will definitely take more number of time. Right, what is the advantage? Right. The debug of a design with an external logic analyzer. And then what are the pros and what are the cons? Let us uh, go through that right now. And why do we need to use the embedded logic analyzer, which is inbuilt inside the FPG right now? So the advantage is system level debug. The advantage is like it can store large quantities of data and a flexible trigger continues. And what are the problems we will face when you say the signals must be physically accessible on the board by a pro and the FPGA must have available IO. That means IO should be there. And uh, if you need a new signal that is not accessible, then you must make a new board, which is a very tough task for us. So doing something with the external logic analyzer is always a tedious task for us. So that's when we bring the embedded logic analyzer into the FPGA itself. So you could see that the logic analyzer is present inside the FPGA, which is the, the R, it is an SOC FPGA. The signal type is a logic analyzer made up of available resources inside the FPGA. What is the greatest advantage is it uses the available logic elements to implement the logic analyzer. And it samples on chip signals on the rising edge of the specified clock signal. And it views the captured data through the standard data connection typically used for programming. So we are going to use the same data connection for which we are using for the programming. The same we are going to use for signal tap logic analyzer and view the captured data. That's the greatest advantage which we are going to get. Okay, what is the advantage of using a signal tap logic analyzer and what is the drawback that also we should know? Because whenever we debug something, we should understand that what could be possible and where you have issues while debugging the design. We can tap signals which are buried deep in design and uh, it comes with free with all versions of pointers. Therefore, no external equipment test or something required. And we can tap new signals with the same board by reconfiguring, recompiling, and reprogramming. No respin is required. And you don't need to provide any IO assignment. So no unassigned IOs are routing. What is the only drawback when we use an embedded signal tap logic analyzer? We say it definitely requires an active device resources because you need to use memory. We need to use logic elements, everything, because definitely it will. Uh, take some more extra resources along with your design. Because of the change in the area, there are chances that it may affect the timing analysis also. And uh, you must have an active data connection. That means we should ensure that the board is connected to the design and we can debug it. So what are the advantages if you see? We can tap any signals which are buried deep into the design and it comes free with all versions of pointers. So, can we see that with the Qualtas Prime design software with the light edition? Yes, definitely it is possible. I'm going to show the demo based on that. And I'm going to show, share the same uh, lab uh, exercise with you, which you can also practice. It. So what does the signal tap does here when we say, you have a design logic and you have a programming hardware, we use an USB blaster. And that is connected to your PC, with, which is having the Qualtas Prime design software, or it is directly having the signal trap too. Okay, what are the two things we are going to do here? Just like we create a signal tap file, which is the STP file, dot STP extension that is recommended. Where it is available, you directly open the file where you can see that signal tap logic analyzer file. Along with your memory files, yesterday I showed you how to create a memory initialization file. Similarly, you can see the signal tap logic analyzer file. Or else, if you wanted to search directly in the intellectual property IP catalog, 
directly you can type here signal tap in the IP catalog, which will directly take you to the Altera signal tap to logic analyzer, which could be directly taken into the uh, QSIS the platform design. There are two ways. The recommended way is like we should use the dot STP, which is the signal tap. So what will happen when we use the signal tap? It will generate the logic analyzer window where you could see what are the data enable and what are the trigger mode, all this information you can see, right? So this I will show you during the demo, right? How we can utilize the signal tap logic analyzer. What we can see from this, like we can see which instance is being edited in the GUI, what operation, and we can also see the status and the resource utilization, like, like how many number of logic elements are used, and what is the memory utilization? Everything you can see that. Right? So we have a built in programmer directly. We can connect the programmer. That means if there is any problem with JTAG, it will say invalid JTAG configuration so that uh, it will say that no device is detected. So we have to ensure that uh, and we have to scan it properly and connect the available devices. So these are the kind of errors which you may get in the signal tap logic analysis. Right, and then uh, what are the other extra conditions which go through is like you have multiple trigger conditions that are available with the signal tap logic analyzer. You can perform AND operation or OR operation comparison. Anything between this you can try to. And then you have multiple trigger conditions where you can see don't care, low, falling edge, rising edge, high, and either edge. So all these things we can provide for any kind of signals. So this is one important thing which we can do. We can add up to 10 trigger conditions and we can choose each and every node and how it need to be compared that information we can provide. I will show you when we go through the tool. And then we can also see the sample depth, which is important. We can provide what is the depth you can say. It can be 1K, like uh, you can provide 1024, how many sample depths you want. That information can also be provided. So this is our signal configuration, right? So this also need to be done in the signal tap logic analysis. You can see two windows here. One is called as the data window. The other one is called the setup window where you could see what kind of debugging operations are happening. In the setup window, it allows configuration of nodes and trigger conditions. You can make the edits here. And data shows the acquired signal information for giving the result. What has been transmitted? And what we are receiving that we can give the results in the window. Right now, let us go through the system console. So I will explain both and then I will show you a demo which consists of both the signal tap logic analyzer as well as the system console. Okay, now we have understood that the signal tap is an embedded logic analyzer. What is the system console console instrumentation? Let us see. The advantage of system console, it extracts away the complexity of weaving digital waveforms. It is super handy for reading and writing memory mapped elements. For example, I have read data, I have written some data, and I wanted to read it and see that okay, what data has been written and what data is read. Okay, I wanted to do that with the system console. It is very easy to see that uh, with the help of system console. And uh, what is the condition before and what is the condition after you write the data? So those informations can be easily checked with the system console with the help of the data script. And uh, you can insert and compile one everything in memory map, which is setable or viewed because you can see that what is the situation before. And uh, once you run the script, like once you modify the data, what happens? Both we can see that it is able to build GUIs to interface with your FPG. So that is the advantage of system console. And where it is available, when you say that, you can see that in the platform designer tool, whenever you wanted to integrate data. So whenever you can a system, right? So then you have interface protocols, memory, DSP, bridges, PLL, everything you accelerate and create an embedded system. And then you wanted to debug that and understand that what is the only option we have is a system console because you will have multiple data that are written and then we need to read and write the data. See, then system console will help you to understand that what data are written and what data are read. So it is very easy to see instead of going through a complex waveform. 
this is beautiful for you to get the details of how that could be possible with the uh, platform designer GUI. So this works with the platform designer GUI so that we can directly take that plot. So in a typical embedded system, for example, you have NEOS, you have on-chip memory, you have JTAG UART, you have switches, you have buttons, everything. And then we are connecting that to the Avalon memory map to slave. So we are trying to build this embedded system. And then you could see that there are multiple interfaces that are involved. And the master is trying to read send the data. And then we have to see that what data is read. Then it is very, very tough for us to debug that manually. So we are adding another master to aid in debugging of system components. And we are accessing memory locations of all these components. When we try to do this, then how this could be possible is by the memory map. In order to do this memory map logic, we have to ensure that how this platform designer, like uh, the system console helps you. So system control allows you to see what is in any memory location in a platform designer system at any point of time. You don't need to click in the memory range what is available. The system console will provide you a clear picture on what is present in the memory location in the platform designer system at any point of time. So how do we get this? We have to connect the data to Avalon memory map to the bridge, which will help you to understand that, okay, what is connected to this? Because this data we are going to connect to our board. So data to Avalon memory master bridge will help you to identify and understand what is present in each and every memory location. How the system look, console will look like? It will be having an interactive console where we can provide the tickle script and then put it. Let me walk you through that right now. Like what are the different options that are available? Let me go through that right now. Right. So this is the system console where you have all the options here. So through JTAG and then you can see connect to you can connect the EOS2 processor, JTAG to Avalon Master Bridge, JTAG UART, and all these informations that would be connected with the user components. And then we can create the system console interface. How it will look like? You can directly launch system console from the platform designer tool. Directly go to tools, system console. Or you can also do that from the NIAS2 command shell also. Right? Let me walk you through the example here. So, how this system console GUI looks like. So, let me take you through the demo now. There is a signal tab demo.qar, which is the Quartus archive file that is available here. So this I will copy now. This file will be shared with you, which you can uh, get an idea of what is happening inside the design. So let me first copy that and then take the design till compilation. So I, in the C drive, I will create a folder called uh, SOC uh, debugging. Inside this SOC debugging, I press this signal tab. So any questions, sir? Uh, not right now, sir. All right, sir. Then now what we need to do is like we open the Quartus Prime Design software, close this uh, project, right? So that now you can say open project. Inside the uh, C drive, right? You have the SOC debugging, we can open that and say signal tab demo dot QAR, which is the Quartus archive. First, I will explain to you what is inside the file so that you will get an idea of how we are going to debug that. Okay. So if you go through the signal tab demo file, there is a bit scratch pad register that is available. What we are going to do is like you have a clock and then you have a reset. Always at the passage of clock or negative of reset. During the reset, scratch pad will have to bit zero as the data. And then what we are trying to do during the write operation, that means we are going to perform the JTAG write. When the write request comes, what we need to do is we should write the data. What data we are trying to write here is like we say that like to H1234, we write some data and the data we have to read it. Whether 
to be aware during the read data, we need to ensure that it is able to read the data correctly, which is the 32 bit zero value that which is provided. What is available in the scratch that we are going to read it. To enable this, we are going to use signal tap first, and then we are also going to see the system console whether the data is written correctly or not that we need to check. Okay, how this process can be and we we'll say when we go to the C drive and we open the SOC debugging folder, you have a signal tap demo restored file. Okay, if you open that, you can see that there would be a logic of a pixel file. You can see that reg access dot pcl file. Now what you can do we can open this tickle file in the word part and I will explain what is present inside the tickle file. If you open this tickle file here it has see now for example what are the informations you can see here. It has set register zero then you can see there is a procedure like register zero and you can see procedure start service master and then procedure stop service master. What we are trying to do is we need to read the data which is present inside it. So master read to it. And what is the data that needs to be written? Again, we need to read. What is the data we are writing is A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4. During reset, it should uh, read as 0. That means it should provide the data as 0. And what we are writing in the register is A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4. So after we write the data, we should again read the correct data. So there are three important operations we are going to do in this. Uh, one is first we read the data in the system uh, logic like a signal tab. During reset, what is the value? During reset, it should be zero. Then we are writing the data. What is the data we are writing is zero x a b c d one two three four. So once we run this script, the system console it will show that a b c d one two three four is the data that is written. And then again, we need to come back to the signal tab and then see that whether it is able to read the data correctly or not. So this is the way where we can debug the data, what we are writing, whether we are able to read that in, in the real time scenario. That's what we are going to check in this uh, particular script. Okay, so this is a tickle script, which is also already available in the same lab, which you can directly refer. Right, so now what I will do is I will connect the board and then we will complete the compilation and then we will do programming the board and then i will show you that what happens uh, in the uh, signal tab logic analyzer then what we will do we will run the system console we will complete the script and then again we will open signal tab and uh, check whether we are able to read the correct data or not okay so give me a minute time so i will connect the board and then we will uh, complete the compilation and then we will enter into the system. So I am using the SOC board now, in which we can see how the debugging happens with the data available master and slave. First, I will connect the power supply, and then I will connect the JTAG also. Right? Just give me a minute. Parallelly, I will continue the compilation also. Uh, for this particular lab, it is uh, very, really tough for you. You can understand that, okay, without uh, the board, uh, it is very tough for you to do the debugging, right? So you can understand that. So that's what I kept this lab as the last demo lab, uh, so that you can get some idea about how do we utilize that logic. So I've connected the board right now. Right, so now what we can do is like we can uh, compile the design and then uh, see what happens inside the logic.
uh, in the earlier case, like when we tried to do that with the DE uh, 10 light pole, it is not an associate, right? So it's not an associate FPGA. So here you have to see that while configuring, we, we will have the FPGA as well as the SOC. There will be a hard processor system while programming the port. Okay, I will show you. That's a fundamental difference. It is very critical for us to understand that. Okay. Now you can see that the number of memory bits uh, utilization will be more because we are utilizing the signal type logic analyzer. It is enabled. So therefore, uh, definitely you will have more resources when compared to the earlier. Let it generate. On the right hand side, you can see that okay, what is the percentage and what is the time taken. You can see that also. See, in the first day, the time taken for all the designs were very less because there is no platform designer or there is no SOC, right? So now you can see that when the design has uh, the system right so the time definitely will be you can see the earlier lab it took around 12 to 14 minutes for you to complete the compilation that's not the case with day one when we do only the quarters prime design software Okay, now what we can do is like we can go to the tools. And then uh, we can go to the programmer first. Okay, tools, programmer. So we can see that what and all we have discussed is still you can get an idea. Run simulation tool, run RTL simulation. That we, you are aware now. Timing analyzer, you are aware. Step planner, you are aware. Netlist viewers, you are aware. RTL viewer, technology map viewer, and then you can see technology map viewer port fitting. Now what we are going to learn in this lab is one is programmer. Second one is signal tap logic analyzer. Third one is system debug tool, which is system console. All the three we are going to learn one by one right now, so that you will get a clear idea of it. And what is also known to you? IP catalog, platform design. This is also explained to you in these three days. Okay. And uh, to get a feel of it, now you can see you have the in memory content, right? So we can see in system memory content editor, which will help you to read the data from the memory. That is also possible. Okay, let us first go through the program. When we open the programmer here, you can see that you have to detect the SOC. So you should say here auto detect. And uh, it will ask you that you select the device because it's an SOC device. You can see that, yes, you can see there is an SOC. 5 HPS, it is called Cyclone 5. Okay, so once you have the Cyclone 5 SOC FPGA, and then you have this. So this is not the case when we try to do that with what? With the D10. So now what you should do, you should click here. And then you should go to edit and say change file. And inside your output files folder, there is a signal tap demo.sof file, which is an SRAM update file. Just say open. Okay. So once you select this file, which is present in the output files folder, just click program, then configure. So once it is ready for programming, you can see that it shows the SOC USB one. That's a JTAG. You can see the mode is JTAG. Now what I should do, now I should start so that I should complete the progress 100 percent, right? You can see that start. And show it shows that 100 percent success. Now what we are supposed to do is like we have done the programming. Now the second step is we should see the signal tap logic analyzer. 
So what we should do is like again go back to the tools and say click signal logic analysis. Right. When you click the signal tap logic analyzer, you can see all the things which was explained in the slides are available here. Sample depth 1k. And then you can have data. You can have set. Both are available here. And then you can provide the data enable, trigger enable, and what are the trigger conditions that could be provided, and what are the operations here. You can see that and R, all operations are available. Now, what we are supposed to do. It's like we should check whether it has taken the SOF, which is the SRAM object file. So signal tap demo dot SOF file is taken. What we are supposed to do is like during the reset condition, what is the data that we can see here? Now we can go to the process, right? And then say run analysis. Okay. When you say run analysis, it is uh, running the process. Now we can go back and say stop analysis. When you stop the analysis, you can see that it's showing 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. This is the data which is available at the reset condition. Right now, what we are supposed to do is like we have a tickle script in which uh, we read the data first to zero. And then we are writing the data A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4. And after writing the data, again, we should read that, right? So now what we need to do is we should go to the system debugging tool, which is the system console. In that, we are going to run the tickle script file. So the tickle file, when we execute it, it will write the data, which is A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4. After writing the data, right, again, we should come back and check whether there is a change in the value R. So now at this reset condition, what is the value it is reading in the from the board? If you see, it is showing 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now what we can do, we can minimize this right now. And then again, we can go back to the tools and go to the system debug tools now. Okay. What and all we have seen so far is like tools. We have seen signal tap logic. Analyzer. Now we should check the system debug tool. So go to tools, system debug tools, and then go to the system console. So this is the GUI of the system console, which was shown in the presentation. We would have gone through that. Now, what we are trying to do in this system console, it's like we should run the tickle script. So for example, when you click PWD here, it is present in this directory. SOC debugging signal tap demo restored inside that signal tap demo restored there is a tickle script called reg underscore access dot tcl how do you source a tickle script or how do you execute a tickle script when you say the command is called a source so what you should do is like source and say reg underscore access dot tcl what I'm saying is force reg underscore access dot tcl and then I say enter. Now when I say enter, what it is providing is it is showing the scratch card register. Reset condition it shows zero. And writing the value as 0x A B C D 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is what is done in the system console. Now what we should do is like we should come back again to the system console and then like signal tap and see whether we are able to read the data correctly or not. Now after running the script, we can try that once again. So we can go to process and say run analysis. Right? Now again we can go to the processing and say stop analysis. You can see that it shows A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, H. Now, from this, what we have understood is what we have done in the system console, whether we are able to read that in the signal tap logic analyzer, which is the embedded logic analyzer, where we can get the data. So, what is the data that is written? So, write data 31 down to 0 that is written in the data A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, H. 
on that data we are able to read it here through the data written and the data read or whatever so these are the different debug techniques that are available with the uh, intel fpgs and intel soc fpgs which uh, the designer can use it okay so only the problem would be you should have the hardware with you in order to perform this kind of debug patterns so i'll share the lab manual with you anyway but uh, you have to uh, check with your logic right the same uh, kind of labs are available for signal tap also a basic lab i hope uh, that should also be available with me i will try to share that also so there is a signal tap example that will also be there which i can prove so this what is the objective of this lab is to understand how do we integrate both the signal tap logic analyzer and the system control? So when you go through the debug approach, first we try to do the module level simulation, then we can do a full level simulation. This is on the simulation based debug. In the hardware based debug, you have signal tap and then you also have system control. There is one more called as in system sources and probes, which is called ISSP, which is a virtual input output tool. Right? So that is not the scope of this particular uh, design. So that is not discussed, but still that is also available for you uh, to debug the logic. Are there any questions till this uh, place in the demo, sir? Uh, not right now, sir. All right, thank you. So I have allowed them to unmute themselves. So sure, they can ask me if they want. Understood. Sir. Thank you. All right. So now there are two more uh, important uh, labs, lab demos which we can try right now. One is the SDRAM in the Verilog HDL, which also requires the board. But then I have a small uh, MP4 video which I can show you. So in the earlier cases where we have discussing about the memory, which is the ST lab, that is also a very important uh, lab that need to be performed. The DE light board, which is the Max 10 device, uh, offers the ST RAM test with the code written in very large HDL. What we are doing going to do in this lab is the memory size of the ST RAM bank will be 64 MB. The ST RAM controller uses a 50 megahertz clock. As the reference and it generates 100 megahertz class clock as the memory. How are we going to check whether this SDRAM is perfectly fine or not? How do we ensure that? Because you have an SDRAM controller which is present inside the FPGA. We are going to perform a read write test where, with the status of the LED and the key, we will come to know whether the SDRAM is properly functioning or not. What we are supposed to do when you say there is a read write test module which writes the entire memory with the sequence before comparing the data, which is the read back sequence. Now, what we are going to try with two LEDs is like the LED R1 will be on if the test is pass after releasing the key zero. We are going to use two keys, like when we press the key zero, LED R1 should be on and LED R2 should start blinking. If this should be the status to ensure that the SDRAM is functioning well. Similarly, in the demonstration setup, if you have a look, whenever we press the key zero, LED R1 and the LED R2 should start blinking. After approximately eight seconds. Recording me, yeah. Recording me, sir. Yeah, shall I continue, sir? It's a warning, yes, please. If there are no questions, can you please mute, madam? One, one, hata diya, na? Jane do, nahi chiz. Hello, shall I continue, sir? Because I'm just getting uh, the background noise. All right. After approximately eight seconds, the LED R1 should start blinking and stay on to indicate the test is passed. So the table will be indicating the status of the indicators, like 
if led r2 is not blinking that means uh, the 50 megahertz clock source is not working we have to press key 0 again to repeat the sdram test okay. so how do we perform this sdram test okay that i will show to you right now where do we get all these details we can go to the reference page to get the details of this example so now you can say design store or dev store for intel fpgas When you click this design store for Intel FPGAs, you can go to the family and say uh, Max 10 device. And you can go to the development kit here and uh, click here Max 10, D it and like. After selecting these two, what we can do is like we can download the example here for example i have an sdram rtl test which is the max 10 d and light which we can take right now so you can click this and you can download the entire code just stay down you have the deal d and light sdram the project title file now you can go to the quarters prime design software and you close the project So you can close this. Now you say open project and you can go to the downloads and select the D8 in light SDRAM test and save. Okay, now you can say launch IP upgrade tool which helps you to perform automatic upgrade. So we can say close and then we can perform a compilation now. We budget. So now I'm connecting the D10 light board uh, so that you can see that uh, how we can try that with the SD run. So now what we can do is like if it has uh, performed the compilation and then it generates the assembler programming file. Now we can go to the tools and then you can say program. Okay. So now you can click start. Again, we can try. Now it shows 100% is successful. So now you are not very sure that what is happening in my uh, board to check the SDRAM test. Okay, to solve this, I have a small video. Okay. How do we check the SDRAM test here? Okay, I'll open the MP4 file. Uh, you can check the process. So what is the process we need to check here? We'll again open the SDRAM test file for you. What we need to do is like when key zero is pressed, that is released, then both LED R1 and R2 should start blinking. After approximately eight seconds, the LED R1 should stop blinking and stay on till to indicate the test is passed. If that is not the case, then we have to again uh, repeat the SDRAM test. I will run the video, you can have a look at it.
perfect. So thank you. Now you would have seen that what is exactly happening in my board. The same uh, logic you would have checked that in the. SDRAM also, right? So what is possible here? The same you would have seen that in the video. So what are the keys that need to be checked? That is absolutely explained in the demonstration set. You can go through this demonstration setup. And uh, you can also debug that whether you can debug this here. Because there are three things like uh, you need to also check the external memory and how that could be possible. So there is an SDRAM test that is available with the SOC FPGA. It is also available with the D10 light and it is also available with the D1 SOC SDRAM. If you open the D1 SOC CDRAM, right, and then you go to the demonstrations folder here. And now you can see in the FPGA section, you have the D1 SOC SDRAM RTL test. You have the entire QPF file, everything is present inside. Using that, you can verify it. I showed this for the DE10 light, but the same could be possible with D1 SDRAM. Are there any questions, sir, till this place? Uh, no, sir, no. Yeah, fine, sir. Participants, uh, if there are any questions, you can ask. All right, sir. If there are no further questions, then uh, you can announce them, sir, what exactly we are going to do and then things like uh, it would be helpful for me also. Okay. So uh, is it uh, the, the end of demo, uh, demo from uh, your side? Yes, sir. It is end of demo from my side. Yes, okay. Sir. No problem. Yeah. So uh, dear participants, uh, so it was uh, very nice. Uh, and uh, frankly speaking, uh, when I contacted uh, Padmanabhan about this, so I thought that uh, he will touch only the initial part of uh, APG and APG programming and only theory part of SOC. But uh, for me, it was, uh, I mean, uh, a comprehensive uh, workshop kind of thing, hands on uh, for this, because I really uh, doubted earlier that uh, whether the demo would happen because of the uh, network problems and all those, but it was really wonderful. Uh, so thank you. So I would request uh, uh, Monica Gambhir from uh, Panipat Institute of Engineering and Technology, Haryana. Uh, associate, uh, she is associate professor in uh, Panipat Institute of Engineering and Technology. Uh, yes, sir. Good afternoon, respected Padmanabhan sir and Professor Dr. Suhas and other coordinators of this FDP. Yeah, sir, uh, this was highly useful FDP for us with huge regards. I would uh, like to say that I am very thankful to Padmanabhan sir for sharing his uh, wonderful knowledge with us. So all the sessions, Thank you so much, yes, Thank you so much. yes, sir, all the sessions were means highly knowledge filled and uh, means connected with each other. And sir, sir, it is we are very difficult to stay connected in online FDPs. Let me frankly um, say this to you: we I have attended so many FDPs, and many a times we lose our interest and we join only for a few sessions, and then we are not connected uh, in in the sessions. But sir, uh, for me it was very difficult to stay away from this uh, any of your sessions, sir, even for uh, five minutes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you so much. Great to hear. Thank you, sir. And it has actually created interest um, in me to work in this domain. I'm very new to uh, this th this domain, sir. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Monika ji. I hope you are also doing some some kind of research in fiber optics, uh, which I have read from your profile. <laughs> sir, I have yeah. done research and but now from students point of view, um, means I have deliberately created interest in this domain because I want to guide my students, those who can. So we are from private college and we are affiliated to university. 
and uh, we don't have such courses that may means uh, that can help our students okay. to get good jobs in this domain and uh, i would request okay. padmanabhan sir to guide me in this regard sir uh, it would be uh, means i would be highly grateful uh, to sir if sir you can guide me how i can train myself first and then uh, what should, what should be my approach to train my students sir definitely madam please uh, contact me we will provide you the materials and then what are the details trainings for all the professors which are required yes sir and it will definitely help you uh, and uh, you can train the students accordingly madam we have our courses which has everything like we have the entire labs like uh, the workshop materials and then the slides lab manual everything which we will definitely share it with you okay thank you so much sir sir i would definitely contact you uh, after this ftp thank Only you very much sir yeah yeah i would like to tell you that dr anju gandhi knows me uh, we we actually attended a training i am aict idlf coordinator of uh, our institute okay uh, sir as, correct so we had done trainings uh, yeah, at uh, uh, delhi uh, yes sir <laughs> right so okay, uh, sir. we were in the same innovator team which did uh, project there okay sir so, so you won the innovation challenge over there yes sir Yes, yes, I. <laughs> Great to hear so that. Please, sir. please convey my best regards to her. I will also call her later. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, and thank thank you, sir, again for giving this opportunity to attend this FTP no, online pleasure, sitting it's here. It's our pleasure, madam. Yeah. Uh, yes, next, I would request one team, of sir. the thank student. You. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next, I would request one of the student from Gautam Buddha University, uh, Nitin Mehta. Yes, sir. Good afternoon to both of you and everyone. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. So I would like my feedback. Uh, first of all, thank you to Suhas sir and Padmanabhan sir for for uh, preparing this wonderful FDP. I've really learned a lot from it. And uh, as a student who would like so to who would like to create a career in VSI, I've learned a lot as as previously I have. Uh, uh, I have done some internships in the in the field only uh, in the ILO, which in which I created various modules. But uh, from this FDP, I think I have learned more from this FDP than the internships, as I didn't know of the static 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 time analysis in the details. And first, I have thought that this will be more of a theoretical type of FDP, but uh, but from what I have learned, this this it was very beneficial for me, and even though if if I have missed one or two minutes of content, I have downloaded the videos and watched it from the starting, so I get more knowledge out of it. So overall, I would say that it was a very great, great program, and I've really got knowledge from it. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Same, yeah, same, same feeling for me also. That if I miss only one minute, then uh, it would be like I have missed many things. So from start to end, uh, I have not missed a single minute in this FDP, uh, apart from obviously doing some admin work. But uh, definitely, sir, uh, this this I also echo the same spirit uh, as uh, uttered by uh, Nitin uh, for our MTech students. I am going to replay all the videos uh, so that they can uh, really perform the experiments uh, with the boards you uh, have given us in the Intel FPJ University Outreach Program. Uh, Thank you, sir. Participants Thank you so uh, who want to give feedback? Because only two names came forward earlier. So impromptu, if anybody wants to give feedback. Hello, Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, this is Narendra Lokhande, your student. Yes, Narendra. Yes. Uh, Padmanabhan, sir, really, it is a very good workshop. Actually, uh, yes, I have been teaching uh, VHDL since long uh, 10 years. Uh, and I'm using the same tool. But uh, the things that I don't know about the uh, this uh, platform, Designer Studio, and all these things. Uh, and initially, I was using the uh, quarters three and uh, quarters eleven and the FPGA, which belongs to Max three family. 
later on what happens we change to the university and so the syllabus was removed so uh, actually from this workshop uh, i regained that uh, 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 we are able to use all the resources which are available on the website and uh, really uh, the workshop is organized in such a way that we don't want to uh, miss a single minute from that it's really a great and one important thing about this workshop towards uh, gajra sir uh, in most of the workshop what happens uh, there are two to three four um, are uh, guest uh, which are delivering the workshop so most of the things are repetitive for us but in this workshop it is not happen so overall this workshop is really a good workshop for us. thank you sir Yes, thank you, Narendra. Although you say my student, but uh, you were my student a long ago, and now you are associate professor. At yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> right. So, so that student means you were my PG student a long ago, a long ago. Yes, it was yes, yes. Right. <laughs> Otherwise, yes. people will feel that you are a BTEC student. You are not. No, a you are associate professor. Nothing. Not from uh, from you. Uh, uh, still, uh, 2004 to uh, you can say that this workshop is also learning from you, sir. That's okay. why I'm. Calling. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was nice that uh, you came here. Yeah. Yeah, Padmanabhan, sir. I told it is like great to hear. Like it. Thank you so much, yes, uh, Thank you. Uh, we have one more uh, feedback if anybody comes forward. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, Lakhan. Yeah. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so present here. I want to thank Padmanan, sir, and Shua, sir, for organizing such a great uh, 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 guest lecture for us. And basically, I want to tell I am from an, I have background from electrical engineering. engineering. I was I have so less knowledge about this field, but I have a keen interest to study in VLSI. And for from this lecture, I have got a pretty much idea how to study, and what I have cleared my basic concept from this lecture. I want to thank Suha sir and Padmanam sir for giving us knowledge we all required. Thank you sir. Thank you, Lakshmi. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lakhan. Uh, so I think uh, then uh, looking towards uh, the uh, feeling of everybody, uh, although uh, they would be uh, probably unhappy that it is ending a little bit of early because we wanted more from you, Padmanabhan, sir. But uh, as it says that uh, everything ends well, right? So it's a happy ending uh, that uh, uh, this is ending a little bit early. Uh, so first and foremost, I would like to thank uh, you and uh, Mr. Israr Sheikh uh, for allowing us, uh, our institute to act as a host institute for this wonderful FDP. And uh, I would like to also thank uh, all those who have helped you uh, from Intel Technologies in this regard. Uh, secondly, I would like to uh, thank uh, our uh, Honorable Director, Professor uh, Vavi Zoshi, sir, uh, and uh, my team, uh, Dr. Manthayakar, sir, uh, Dr. Gilbar, uh, uh, sir, and all others. Uh, I, I could see Dr. Vavi uh, uh, Zoshi, sir, here, so uh, I would stop my uh, thanksgiving in between and uh, let him speak for a minute or so. Sir, your feedback. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, Padmanavan sir and uh, the Intel authorities for uh, giving us opportunity to conduct this workshop, uh, which is really very, very important. Uh, as I see, I could attend uh, a few sessions, uh, although I could not practice, uh, but uh, the, the coverage was excellent as regards to use of FPGAs, the architecture of FPGAs, the uh, Quartus tool uh, used for programming of FPGAs, then SOC, I mean, entire contents were uh, very good for uh, students and uh, researchers who are actually going to use these. There were a few uh, questions also which were asked on day one when I was uh, uh, attending full time. 
later on i could not attend it full time uh, a few questions remain which i will uh, take it uh, uh, with padmanabhan sir in an offline mode uh, however uh, the attendance also was excellent right from the beginning although i saw 180 registrations before the start of the program but maximum were something like 120 attended and uh, on an average the attendance was something like 80 85 uh, so it was overall a good course and uh, we would love to host similar courses for our students as well as faculty in general so thank you very much thank you sir thank you yes sir thank you and uh... Uh, lastly, I would like to thank all the participants, uh, all the faculty participants, all uh, PG and research scholars, and uh, enthusiast, uh, enthusiastic uh, UG students also, uh, because uh, many students actually uh, mailed me, WhatsApp me that, sir, please allow uh, undergraduate students also. And uh, I would like to uh, thank all uh, those who have helped me directly uh, or indirectly. Uh, in organization of this, uh, if there is any uh, shortcomings from this for this, uh, the blame uh, should go to me uh, because I am actually uh, suffering from COVID also. I and my wife both are uh, actually home isolating right now. So uh, I'm beginning to recover. Obviously, in two three days I will be able to join my uh, institute also. So uh, thank you uh, everybody. Uh, thanks uh, once again. So I hope uh, uh, the contents of this workshop uh, will be as a starting point for a learning in this uh, FPGA uh, journey. So uh, I would not say that it is the end, it is uh, just the start. So thank you very much everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So I'm stopping this session. So all the best for your future uh, learning.